How's everybody doing this morning? Today we're bringing you a panel of uh, uh, great community activists. Uh, we have been working to try and educate the community about what we all know is an unfair water settlement. And the judge has given preliminary approval and we know that this is not what we deserve. This is not close to making us whole. There's some good parts to the settlement and then the settlement is lacking in so many areas. But now we're up against the clock and we have to make some decisions. Each person has to make that decision for themselves. No one can make this for you. You have to be the one to say yes, no or yes with concerns or do nothing. And we're gonna go through each of those categories this morning with some fine activists who've been beating the drum to make the uh, sure that our residents are woke, that we know what we're getting into and we are a resilient and tough city and we're gonna do what's best for all of us. So I wanna start out by talking about opting in, opting in and registering for this settlement. And we're gonna uh, open up this portion with our councilman of the first ward, councilman Eric Mays. Eric, would you say a little something about yourself and then get into that category of opting in. Thank you. Yeah, I'm first what uh, city councilman Eric Mays, and I'm watching this March 29th deadline. Um, March 29th is about nine days away in order to opt in. You can find that opportunity at um, officialwatersettlement.com. You can register online. You can also, um, register by filling out the papers that came in the mail and the white big white envelope about 57,000 went out, but you must be registered by March 29th. You must be registered by March 29th. And when we say registration, that's what we mean by opting in. You can be a part of the settlement. And there's two ways to do it. One, you can go online and register um, at officialflintwatersettlement.com, or you can do it by paperwork that you mail in the package. And that stuff must be postmarked. And a basic arm um, registration and opt-in is name, address, birth date, look at the forms, look at the registration online, sign it and date it. Sign it and date it and get it in the mail or sign it electronically and push the button online and you have opt-in. Don't worry about um, documentation such as tests and documentation registration comes first and then between august i mean between april and august you have plenty of time to get your evidence and documentation so my role is to tell you go to officialwatersettlement.com you can register and opt in that's the same thing online or the white packets, um, you can fill that out and get it in the mail so it will be postmarked before March 29th, nine days left. Eric, thank you. That's such important information. And if everyone is looking at their screen, you can see where that must be mailed to. Those of you that did not get a packet 
you can pick one up at the class action uh, law uh, uh, group at Robert T. Longway, uh, right behind uh, the uh, uh, off of Robert T. Longway, uh, and and uh, that's that's on the page as well. It's right behind Holiday Inn. And it's in a little plaza and they have a sign outside says Flint Water Class Action. And so you can go in there and say, I did not get a packet and I want to register. If you have an attorney, check with your attorney to make sure you're registered or not. Thank you. And Claire, if I may, I got a text from the lawyers on Robert T. Longway. They're going to be open from 10 to 4 today. Well, Saturday, I don't know. And then tomorrow, Sunday, they'll even be open in these last weeks or two. Thank you. Thank you so very much. All right. So next we have the uh, opt-in. You register but you have some serious issues and concerns about the settlement. And we have a right as plaintiffs to fill out a paperwork where you can document your issues with that. We need to let the judge know that we're signing up for the lawsuit, but we have some serious concerns. And for that portion, we're gonna call on Jasmine Hall. Hi everyone, um, I'm Jasmine Hall. I am a Flint native, I'm an epidemiologist. Um, I'm also the health and environment chair for the NAACP and an environmental justice grill with Black Millennials for Flint. And I'm gonna talk about the objections process. Um, so as, as has been said, you know, first you want to register for the settlement. You cannot file objections if you don't first register. Um, and so I will, pull up the sample objection form um, that was created by community members in partnership with um, one of the law firms, just so that we can have a sense of what, what it looks like to actually file an objection. And this website right here, um, www.bitly slash FWCS, as in Flint Water Crisis Settlement Objections, um, that'll take you to this sample objections letter. And I'm just going to read through um, some of the key information from this objections form really quickly. Um, so first, one of the first kind of things to note is that this form must be received by March 29th. Um, and of course, as I said, you know, you send in the registration form and the address that you send the objections form to is different. It's this clerk of the court address. Um, and there will be a fairness hearing on July 12th. 2021. If you scroll down, you will actually see some of the objections that have been um, highlighted by community members. This document is, um, you are able to download it, edit it, change anything you need to, and then uh, go ahead and mail it off. So um, you want to start off by selecting kind of how you're in the settlement. So did you own or live, a res live in a residence? Um, did you operate a business? Were you exposed to water 21 days out of a 30-day period? Um, or were you exposed to water and diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease? And that just kind of helps establish that you are um, a part of this class. And then you'll go ahead and select all that apply um, if, if you object to the settlement for the following reasons. So the deadline um, to register is too short. Um, consequently, the mail has been slow due to COVID-19. So that's kind of um, a timeliness issue. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic shut down businesses. So I wasn't able to reach um, my class lawyers, that's another potential objection. Um, the bone lead scan test. So if you haven't had the opportunity um, kind of access to the bone lead scan test, that's an objection as well as um, it has not been approved by the FDA for use in humans. That's a, that's a potential objection that you could select. Um, another is uh, the neuropsychological test, which is one of the three kind of main buckets of proof for kids. If your child has not been able to access a neuropsychological test, um, you, you can use that as, as an objection. And we know, of course, only 1% of those tests have been done. Um, the next potential objection is $1,000 cap um, for residents. 
if you if you think you know that that should be raised or you have concerns with that that's something you could select um as far as homeowners you know this this doesn't um kind of match the the level of defendants wrongdoings um as a homeowner you could go ahead and select that one um if the settlement was so confusing and you don't really understand it um if you know that packet was too vague and the details weren't really available you can select this next one um if you think the attorneys are being paid too much while residents are not getting enough you could go ahead and select this uh next option if you believe that the class representatives or lead plaintiffs are being paid too much um then that's another objection if you haven't been able to participate in zoom me meetings concerning the registration process um the lawyer if you had contact with a lawyer and they were not um willing to help support you write an objections letter um in order to go to the fairness hearing on july 12th then that's a potential objection um another one if if you don't know how much money you're going to get from this settlement um yet you're asked to sign up for it or you know make a decision that's a potential objection um if you if you notice that this settlement does not include payment of of water bills um that's a potential objection and then the breakdown to children um being not adequate fair or reasonable and the percentages um seem to be arbitrary that's another potential objection and near the bottom um you'll see that the lawyers um included space for other any other comments that um you may have so if you want to attach any evidence supporting your objection if you want to um describe it in detail we encourage you to describe it um in you know any concerns that you have in in detail if you need to attach a sheet go ahead and attach it and then uh, get it mailed off um in time for them to receive it by the 29th um also if you intend to appear at the fairness hearing on July 12th um or have an attorney appear on your behalf you would go ahead and check this box and then um you would sign it print it print, print your name and date it it's important to make sure um as we look at um this objections letter that you actually sign it with your hand so you cannot use an e-signature you cannot have a lawyer sign it on your behalf if you have objections um you can go like i said to bitly/fwcsobjections download this form fill it out and you have to sign it um and and get that sent back over and the address um where you would send in your objections is right here so at the US District Court um Lafayette Boulevard in Detroit Michigan this is where you would um go to send in your objections if you don't have a printer or you don't um have a way to get online and get this objections form you can um reach out to this law office Brenda Williams and Ken Scott um 2702 Flushing Road so Flushing and Forest Hill um or you can call them 767-6655 they're also encouraging people to you know go online use this same form um cuz we we did kind of collaborate on this form and but but if you need to reach out to them they will be available through um through the 29th to answer your questions okay thank you, thank you very much for that well covered uh uh presentation about some of the shortcomings and they are big in mm -hmm. the water settlement and to let people know they have a right to make their voices heard after they sign up your voice can still be heard through these objections and so we appreciate that uh summary of that Jasmine thank you the next sure. choice within the uh uh water settlement is called uh uh opt out it, huh Opt out. opt out. Opt out. I'm sorry. I could, I lost it. Okay. This the next part is opt out and we're going to ask Judy Alexander to give us the profile of what a person does when they are not wanting to participate in the settlement. So Judy, take it away. Okay. Good morning everybody. 
Uh, I'm Judy, and I am a resident of Flint since, <clears throat> since 1975. I'm retired a uh, community activist. One of my hats is the Poor People's Campaign. So I'm here to talk about if you really don't want to participate in this settlement at all, but you think that um, by pursuing legal action with your own attorney, you might be able to get something better with these defendants, then you must opt out. Um, there is an official opt out form in the registration package. If you got the package in the mail, it would be bordered with a pink border. It's a, a two page form. If you go into the law office on Longway and pick up a copy, it might be a Xerox copy, so it might not have the pink border. But you do have to use the official opt out form and you do have to um, mail it so that it is received by March 29th or at least postmarked by March 29th. What you're doing when you're opting out, you're saying, I do not want to be a part of this settlement. So you will not have any rights to any claims for compensation through this settlement. But you are retaining the right to get your own attorney and pursue your claims against these four defendants separately on your own. We highly recommend that you talk with an attorney before you do that because the claim that you wish to pursue on your own outside of this settlement, it's possible that there might be a statute of limitations or some other technicality that would prevent that from being a wise choice for you. So um, even though you always have the right to represent yourself, we highly recommend before you opt out that you talk with an attorney, review it with an attorney. And if you and your attorney feel that you have a good case to take to trial, then you must fill out the opt out form and have it postmarked by March 29th. Um, by opting out, as I said, you're not going to receive any compensation out of this settlement. You also give up the right to object under the settlement. You have to opt in if you want to file an objection. But if you feel you have something outside the scope of an objection, but simply just something different that's not covered by this settlement agreement, then you have to fill out the opt out form. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that, Judy. And I think people are really um, uh, interested in all of these choices. And I think that you brought it home that when you opt out and you don't wanna be a part you still must do the paperwork and that the attorneys that are now involved with this with this water settlement cannot represent you so it's very important for you to find an attorney who's going to take your case if you opt out before you do so but again it must be in writing and we have the documents posted here that you must fill out and submit to the court that you do not want to be a part of this, and that will free you to do your own lawsuits. So last but not least is doing nothing. Uh, you may be someone who got that big folder with all that legalese and writing and everything, and you just tell yourself you don't want to be bothered. That is the worst option that a person can take. Because by doing nothing, you deny yourself the right to pursue legal redress with the defendants that are now named. And so you are saying to yourself that you do not want to stand up for your rights to do something as it relates to this tragedy and this horrendous event that has happened to us. We are not a do nothing community. There's something you can do. There's the other three choices that you can make and you need to protect yourself and your family by doing something, opting in or opting in with no objections, with objections or opting out. Those are the three events that may protect you and your family for now and in the future. So I wanna say thank you again to our 
panelists and you all have been involved with trying to expose the shortcomings of this water settlement. And now we're here and our uh, backs are against the wall and there's things that we can do and that we should do. And I wanna urge those who are listening to this to put your comments in the chat and to uh, put your uh, questions in the chat. And there's a numbers that's, gonna, that's being posted, phone numbers and information that we can, that you can reach out. A number of us have put our phone numbers there to volunteer, to answer questions. If you need a copy of the uh, forms that's been spoken of today, we'll try to make sure we get them to you, answer the questions as best we can uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, service, help to service this community. And so with that, I want to thank all the panelists again. Uh, this, you can read, visit this Zoom and look at it again. If you've something you missed, you can read re-look at it and uh, uh, so with that I'm going to close out the, the conversation and th again thank the panelists and we are told that this uh, video will be posted on channel 17 and we're going to try to advertise that when we get the details of that. So thank you again. Again you can re-look at this. It's going to be up for you to get paper and pencil and write down the information that you need. And thank you so much. And Flint is a great city and we deserve better. But as Flintstones, we know we have to fight every step of the way for what we get. So thank you and have a great day. Thank you. And if Laura wants to close us um, with just some key phone numbers and things, um, that would be awesome. Yes, yeah, so we have phone numbers that are obviously listed on um, the slide that's being presented, um, but we wanted to reiterate the information uh, verbally. So um, I've just been designated as the reader right now. So to contact Archer Systems, for the court registration, the phone number is 1-800-493-1754. Again, that phone number is 1-800-493-1754. To reach the class action team, the group that is located on Robert T. Longway Boulevard, their phone number is 1-866-536-0717. Again, that phone number is 866-536-0717. And they are located behind the Holiday Inn on Robert T. Longway Boulevard, that address is 1176 Robert T. Longway Boulevard, Flint 48503. Again, 1176 Robert T. Longway Boulevard in Flint, 48503. And as First Ward Councilman Eric Mays indicated, they have extended their hours so that we may meet the the March 29th deadline. Um, I believe they're open today until four o'clock. Um, Councilman Mays said, indicated from 10 to four and they will have hours tomorrow. The third phone number is for Brenda Williams and Ken Scott Law Office. If you have any questions, they have offered to be available to answer questions. And this is the law office on Flushing Road by Forest Hills Road on the corner. Their phone number is 
810-767-6655. Again, that number is 810-767-6655. And their address is 2702 Flushing Road. 2702 Flushing Road. And that is at the intersection of Flushing Road and Forest Hills. Now, three of our eminent community members have volunteered their own personal phone numbers. Um, if anyone would like to reach out to ask questions, um, if they have any questions about the questions, um, this is a very convoluted, confusing process. We do understand we're just as confused as you are, um, but we do have three more phone numbers from community members who have graciously volunteered their time and energy to, to answering questions. The first is First Ward Councilman Eric Mays, uh, who has always made his phone number public and available for any community concerns. And his number is 810-922-4860. Again, Councilman Mays' phone number is 810-922-4860. Councilman Jerry Winfrey Carter has also volunteered her phone number. And her phone number is 810 397-3621. That phone number again is 810-397-3621. Thank you very much, Councilman Winfrey Carter, for providing that service to the community. And then last but not least, uh, Claire McClinton from the Democracy Defense League her phone number is 810-813-1852. Again, her phone number is 810-813-1852. I know this is a lot of information. Thank you for your patience. I just want to read off the email for the, the class action team. Info, that's I-N-F-O, at Flint Water Justice, all lowercase with no spaces, F-L-I-N-T-W-A-T-E-R-J-U-S-T-I-C-E dot com. Again, that's info at flintwaterjustice.com and for the registration site it's www.officialflintwatersettlement.com and that's spelled it's all lowercase no spaces between the words official flint water settlement O F F I C I A L F L I N T W A T E R S E T T L E M E N T dot com. Is that Sufficient, do you think, for everybody, or do you is think there's anything else that needs to be reiterated or repeated again? Well, thank you so much, Laura, for uh, sharing that because it's, this is important information, but I just want the listeners to also, uh, and viewers to also know that they can go to Flint H2O Justice, Flint H2O Justice Facebook page with comments and other questions.